students. Welcome to TLE Dressmaking 8. I am Justine Arisare, your teacher for today. So before we start our lesson, here are some reminders. Number one, stay alert and focus to the video lesson. And then number two, prepare your pen and paper. So today, we are going to discuss about the basic hand stitches. Are you ready? Okay, let's start! So here are the objectives of our lesson. Number one, identify the basic hand stitches, enumerate the different basic hand stitches, and the last one, value the importance of basic hand stitches in dressmaking. But before that, let's play a guessing game. I am going to show you a picture and you are going to identify what is on the picture. Okay, so in the first picture, what do you see? Okay, it is a back. How about the second picture? Are you familiar with this picture? Okay, very good. It is a stitch. If you combine back and stitch, we have... Okay, very good. Back stitch. Okay, next. What is on the picture? In the first image, what do you see? Okay, it is a chain. How about the second picture? Again, it is a stitch. If you combine those pictures, we have chain stitch. Okay, very good. So the reason that you are taught how to sew, so that if you learn some of these basic hand stitches, you will be able to do embroidery, seams, and hems. Is that clear? Okay, so now, let us start by discussing the basic hand stitches. I will show you some pictures of different hand stitches and you are going to identify it, okay? Okay, so here are the words to study. When we say seam or stitch, it is a loop of thread or yarn resulting from a single pass or movement of the needle in sewing, knitting or crocheting. And next, we have hand sewing is stitching a fabric together permanently by hand. So these are the seven basic hand stitches. Number one, back stitch. Number two, basting stitch. Number three, running stitch. Number four, outline stitch. Number five, blanket stitch. Number six, catch stitch. And number seven, chain stitch. So the first one we have backstitch. When we say backstitch, okay, very good. It is the strongest hand stitch and is used to imitate machine stitches. So how are we going to sew backstitch? Okay, so we are going to make one running stitch, then take a backstitch to the beginning of the first stitch, thus overlapping each running stitch. Next, we have basting stitch. Basting stitch is a quite important in successful sewing. This is used to hold fabric temporarily in place until permanently stitched. There are four types of basting. We have hand basting, machine basting, pin basting, and basting edges with an iron. All basting is done with a single strand of thread. Often the thread is a highly contrasting color to the surface. This provides an easy visibility since basting is always removed before the garments is given the final press. Running stitch Running stitch is a simple needlework stitch consisting of a line of small even stitches that run in and out through the cloth without overlapping. To make this stitch, First, you are going to push point of needle in and out of the fabric until you have several stitches on the needle. Hold the fabric thought with left hand, pull the needle through, practice until you make fine stitches. The fourth one is outline or stem stitch. This is similar to the back stitch but it is slanted. To make this stitch, first, 
make one slanted backstitch in front of the another, letting each one overlaps the one it is just a little bit until the design is filled. Blanket Stitch a buttonhole stitch used on the edges of a blanket or another material too thick to be hemmed. Catch Stitch Catch Stitch is also called herringbone stitch. This is used for a flat finish next to the fabric such as seam binding on a hem. To make this stitch, hold open hem edge away from you Work from left to right. Take a stitch in a hem, then a tiny stitch to the right just beyond edge of hem with the point of needle to the left. This makes diagonal line that across each other. So the last one we have chain stitch. It is an ornamental stitch in which loops are crocheted or embroidered in a chain. To make this stitch, insert the needle in and out of the fabric as in running stitch. Bring the thread under the tip of the needle while still in the fabric, then pull the thread through. So now, I will be showing a short clip on how to sew the different hand stitches. Are you ready? Okay, so please observe carefully. Let's learn the basic hand stitches of how to sew them and which techniques works best for different purposes that you may use in your everyday off when working with your project. Suppose you are now ready to learn then let's start. Hand stitching is sometimes seen as a lost art. And while that may be true, it's not entirely accurate. Hand stitches are as useful and pertinent today as they have ever been. This tutorial will provide a step-by-step -step process to implement the various 7 most common basic hand stitches. You will not only learn how to sew the stitches, but you will also learn when and where to use them. Let's start with running stitch. Start by threading your needle. To thread your needle, begin by cutting your thread diagonally about 18 inches long. Grasp the needle between your thumb and finger. Then brace your hand against the other hand. Moisten behind the eye of the needle and then push thread through the hole. Easy, right? Then tie your knot in your thread. To tie a knot, wrap one end of the thread around your forefinger. Allow about one fourth inch lap over the thread. Using your thumb, roll these threads together. Slip loop of finger and pull to the end of the thread. And now for the running stitch, press the tip of your needle on the underside of your fabric and bring the needle up through the top of the fabric until the knot touches the back of the fabric. Maneuver the tip of your needle above and below the fabric to create the stitches. Because the running stitch is small, you can probably weave two or three stitches onto the needle before pulling the needle and thread through the fabric completely. Working in two or three stitch needle lengths like this is an efficient way to sew the straight seam. Pull the needle and thread through the fabric thoroughly and pull it taut before moving onto the next set of stitches. This straight running stitch is the most fundamental of seams. You can easily adjust the length of each stitch to match your project needs. 
Keep in mind that the shorter each stitch is, the stronger your overall seam will be. Next is basting stitch. To start with after threading and nothing, place the tip of your needle on your fabric's underside and press it upward to the fabric at your starting point. Press the tip of the needle down to the fabric with another one half to three foot away from the exit point of your last stitch and repeat the stitch. Continue working in this vast, even and straight base stitch. The running base stitch or basting is useful for temporarily holding two fabric pieces together and in place. The running base stitch is not as strong as the running stitch but it is much faster to sew. The next stitch to learn is a back stitch. A back stitch is one of the strongest hand sewing stitches. The back stitch gets its name because the needle goes into the fabric behind the previous stitch. On the contrary, with a running stitch, the needle passes through the fabric an even distance in front of the previous stitch. Once you understand the back stitch technique, it is a relatively quick and easy stitch to do. It can be used for mending seams, hand sewing small project, attaching zipper, and more. The back stitch is not only pretty, it is also strong, super strong in fact. Its primary purpose is for sewing seams that require heavy duty strength. Easy, right? There are more stitches that you need to learn. Next will be the blanket stitch. Thread your needle and not to thread at the end. Press the tip of your needle into your fabric underside about one half inch away from the hem and bring the needle up to the fabric stop. This seam will run right to the left. So, you will want to be on the right end of your seam. Pull the entire needle and thread through the fabric stop until the hidden knot touches the fabric's underside. For this first stitch, to get the blanket stitch started, you will want to loop the thread around the hemline and press the tip of your needle onto the underside of your fabric at the same spot you just came through. Pull the needle and thread through the same hole. Keep a small loop of thread out. Then, take your needle and run it through the loop, going left to the right. Pull the thread flat but not so tightly that it bunches up to the end of your fabric. Your free thread should meet up with your stitch at the hemline. Practically in the blanket stitch, each stitch holds the previous one in position and in place. Continue to lengthen your blanket stitch as far as you need it to go. The blanket stitch is known for its visibility along the very edge of the fabric. How to sew a catch stitch? To start with, thread the needle and not thread at the end. Press the tip of your needle on the underside of your fabric hem and bring the needle up through the top of the fabric until the knot touches the fabric's back. Your needle and thread should be on the left side of your fabric. You will be sewing from left to right. Place the tip of your needle about one half inch or three fourth inch above your exit thread. Then move it to the right above one eighth inch. At this point, press just a needle tip down through your fabric to the underside. Aim the tip of the needle about one eighth inch to the left. Pull the whole needle and thread up to the top of your fabric and pull the thread thought. 
To create the X that is the signature of the cat stitch, press the tip of your needle about one half inch to the right of your very first thread exit. Press just the tip of the needle down to the underside of your fabric, then bring it back to the top of your fabric about 1 8 inch to the right. Pull the whole needle and thread through the pull and thread thought. Now, you have created your first scotch stitch. Continue these steps to create a land and cotch stitches. It's helpful for the stitch which feels backward at times. To remember that the top of the stitch is right to left stitch and the bottom of the stitch is left to right. Don't be afraid to pick up your fabric and rotate it around as you get more comfortable with the stitch. This will help you to create more precise and accurate stitch lengths and positions. Continue until you have completed the length of your catch stitch seam. It's like a zigzag stitch as a process with X as a result. The cut stitch is a great stitch choice for hems. It's nearly invisible from the front of your fabric. The X nature of the stitch provides a little give to the hem which is useful. Another good place for the stitch is to attach thicker or heavier lining fabrics to the hemline such as sewing on curtain linings. Next is sewing a chain stitch is just what it sounds like. Chain stitch is a series of stitches connected in a chain-like pattern. While the chain stitch is an ancient technique, it's still one of the most widely used stitches in the world of sewing. Start with a small stitch. Make a simple stitch Bring the needle through the back of the fabric, and then bring it through the fabric of the fabric near the first hole. Come back through the fabric near the stitch. Bring the needle through the back of the fabric a short distance below your first stitch. The new hole should be in line with the first two. Next, loop the thread to the first stitch. Bring the needle under the initial stitch from the side. You may need to use a needle tip to work the stitch open slightly. Pull the thread through so that it's reasonably tight. Put the needle back through the second hole. Next, put the needle point through the same hole that you came up through in step 2. Then your stitch should look like a skinny oval or slit. Now, you have just made the first link of your chain. Come back through the fabric below your stitch again. Now, all you need to do is to repeat the steps to continue your chain and repeat as needed to continue this pattern to continue adding links to your chain. This stitch is just as useful for filling in shapes as it's for outlining, as its chain structure makes it flexible enough to following curves and spirals. The last stitch for this video is the ladder or slip stitch. The slip stitch is also called the ladder stitch, or an invisible ladder stitch is a useful hand sewing stitch to close the seam. To start with the stitch, press the tip of your needle onto your fabric's underside up in one of the folds. Pull the needle and thread through so the knot is invincible. Press the tip of your needle on the opposite hem directly across from the original exit point. Push the needle tip into the fabric so that the needle tip follows the hem inside the fold. Exit the needle tip from the hem but fold about one half to three fourth inch away from the insertion point. Pull the whole needle and thread out from the folded hem and pull the thread thought. This will close up the first rung of your leather stitch. Continue in this way until you have completed your slip stitch seam. The slip stitch or aka the leather stitch is most commonly and effectively used for closing up homemade pillows. When you use a thread that matches your fabric, 
the stitch become pretty much invincible. Amazing, right? Okay, since you already know the different basic hand stitches, let us go back to the pictures that I have presented earlier. So again, what is this? Very good, back stitch. How about this one? Okay, basting stitch. And how about this one? Okay, very good, running stitch. Okay, so what was the lesson all about? About basic hand stitches. Very good. Can you enumerate the different basic hand stitches? Okay, very good. We have seven basic hand stitches. Number one, back stitch, basting, running, outline or stem, blanket, catch, and chain stitch. Okay. So why is it important to learn the basic hand sewing stitches? Knowing the basic hand sewing techniques allow you to quickly make repairs and do small projects. Even if you have a sewing machine, there are times that hand sewing is better to give you the results you want. So now, let's have an evaluation. Prepare your pen and paper. In this activity, you are going to identify the following basic hand stitches. Write your answer in your answer sheets. I am giving you 5 minutes to answer. Good luck! Okay, so let's check your answers. Number one, the correct answer is chain stitch. Number two, okay, catch stitch. Number three, back stitch. And then number four, basting stitch. Number five, blanket. And then number six, outline stitch. Very good. Okay, from seven to ten, what are the four types of basting stitch? Okay, we have hand machine pin and then basting edges with iron very good class great job and that ends our discussion bye